Yo, what's going on guys? Matthew B. Haynes here, AKA The Clock Master. I am here with my wife. Shannon, AKA Cosmic Banks. And we are here to check out the first episode for Avatar The Last Airbender. The Netflix series. So, um, so Shan actually reacted to or re-watched uh, episode one on the channel. If you guys are interested in seeing the comments here, commentary one on that. Two. One and two or something mistake. like that. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, go check it out. Um, but we uh, so okay, so you never finished uh, the whole series, right? So not to my knowledge. Like I remember catching bits and pieces like as a kid, but like I don't remember like a damn thing. Like I remember certain characters. I remember Ozai. I remember um we were talking about some other characters. Uncle Iroh. Uncle Iroh, I remember Uncle Iroh. Iroh. Yeah. Like the yeah. main, characters, main characters I remember. So I I remember kind of their personality. You never met Tall. I never, never met, got far. I never got that yeah. far, no. Yeah. So we're not even gonna see Toph this season anyway, yeah. most likely. I don't think we will. But I do um, know of yeah. Toph because I was a Tumblr kid and yeah. people <laughs> on Tumblr love her. Yeah, I still do. I uh yeah, so I um yeah, I mean I grew up watching this show. Like it's been it's been a long time since I rewatched the entire series, but I watched I pretty much every weekend, like on Nick, I was watching the episodes and uh, when it was airing. And I remember uh, even watching up to Korra, like watching up to at least like the first half of Korra um, while it was airing for the first time. And then I just kind of fell off um, from it because I just couldn't keep up with it. And at the time, it wasn't really easy to watch the episodes on reruns. You had to either wait for reruns or record it. And like, you yeah. couldn't like, it wasn't available on streaming. And and Avatar wasn't even, at one point too, it wasn't even available in the US Netflix. So you couldn't even watch it on the US Netflix. Yeah. You know, you had to find other ways to watch it. So it was a little difficult to watch and catch up the show. Yeah, y'all got it easy now. Yeah, y'all got it easy <laughs> now to catch up. But anyway, yeah. So I mean, I grew up with the show, but it's a while. So I don't remember too much. I remember pretty much most of the beginning of how everything happens. Um, certain key, key characters that come in later and talk, of course, and everything like that. But certain parts later in between, like the middle seasons toward the end of the, of, of, of the show, the series, I just don't remember too much. So anyways. Um, that's it. Let's get right into it. Full reactions to this is on our Patreon. The link is down below. And we're going to try to be getting this at least once or uh, once or twice a day to get these up for you guys so we can get this out nice and quick. And the review for this should already be up because we're watching this earlier. So my review and like our review should be up already on the channel for how we're thinking about the series. If you want to hear what we're thinking about the whole series further down the line. Anyways, long intro. Let's get right into it. Talk about the latest you normally do. Let's get into it now. Ah. It feels good to see some good fire bending, man. <laughs> some earth bending too. Oh, this Dang. looks so good already. Hurry. What in the chocobo? <laughs> right, right, right. Oh. Oh, son of a. That's gonna leave a mark. Oh, bro, this looks really good. This looks yeah, really good. I'm really good. impressed so far with like yeah, like the visuals. Good. Yeah. My G. <laughs> Man, he ain't going nowhere on fire. <laughs> my God, bro, visually, oh my God, bro, bro. <laughs> Man, if the story's bad. At least the the visuals are great. Mm -hmm. mm. Ouch! Because it is our time. Mm. Jeez! My God! Good Man, God! Frisbee. The Avatar. Changed up the intro a bit there. Yeah, I was waiting for the Fire Nation attack. Yeah. <laughs> everything just visually visually a 10 out of 10. oh yeah wow they're actually showing a lot of what happens you get, i mean you see it more in flashbacks but it's interesting that they're choosing to show this first <laughs> but yeah the airbenders are not a threat because they're all monks just chilling <laughs> so you think so you think so cool Man, he he just looks like Aang. Like he this does. is Aang right here. <laughs> the power, which is why you will make a great avatar. Why do I have to be different? Here was never one to responsibility. That's a fact. Hmm. 
as soon as he leaves this temple, he die in. I mean, <laughs> he's the last airbender. Yeah, I know. But that's what I'm saying in the series of events. Oh, okay. He is, okay. The, he is dying like, right after I'm this. like, dude is the last airbender. I am aware of that fact. <laughs> but my point being, as soon as Aang leave, he did. I was waiting to see. It's the cheeks. I to feed the baby bison, and I'm supposed to save the world? That's a fact right there. Yeah. Oh. They're doing a lot of interesting things, but I think it works. Remember, no survivor. What I say, as soon as he left the temple. I can see the future! And this supposed to be a bell guy? They gotta be a bell person. There's always a bell There's person. There's always a bell person or a horn <laughs> person. <laughs> nah, they just yell. <laughs> <laughs> right. Bro, can't you just like put out their fire with the air? What happens when air touches? I don't know, man. What happens when oxygen touches fire? Come with me. It expands. Me. Can... Man, I don't know how things <laughs> work. I think you can blow away with enough air, you know, if it overwhelms the fire. That's what I'm saying. But remember, oxygen feeds fire, so. Yeah, but if I blow out a candle. Yeah, yeah. It blow the... it out. Yeah, and you're right about that. But you have to be strong enough, I guess. I mean, you have like five fire firebenders at you, you know what I mean? That's a lot. I guess. Man, fight choreography is like <laughs> on 10. That's clean, man. God, I love this so much. Mm. Good God. <laughs> The Fire Nation is overwhelming. Yeah. Ouch, man. Just burned her on the ground. Crazy. Can't take any risks, man. Oh, my God. Mm. Yep, you see? That's what I'm talking about. You see, he's using the, the air to his advantage. Yeah. And he's strong enough to make that air be food for him. It's crazy. Well, Air and fire doesn't go well together. Or it can, depending on how you use it. Oh no. That's very terrifying. Oh. Gosh, open sea is so scary sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're gonna go down water, but you're still going down. Jeez. Mm. Bro. That's, Jeez, that's terrifying. Jeez. That's when they put fear Christ. in the thing. <laughs> that's when they put fear in the in the, in the um in the rating. Good lord, bro! That is so the coolest thing. That is so cool. I ain't gonna lie. That is literally badass. I'm not even. I'm not even gonna hold it. Look at this. Wow. <laughs> Gosh. Yo, I'm getting tears because how beautiful everything looks. Yeah, like Julie, it looks amazing. If you got issues with the story, fine, iron it out. But this looks great. Fight choreography is amazing. The music, all of it, the editing, it just this this yeah. this is, this is awesome. I, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. But it seems. Some of you can't be trusted to stay at your posts. So from now on. He definitely sounds very similar to Sokka. He does. Incredible leadership skills. That's right. They don't realize it. Very funny. <laughs> it was usually around this time Sokka would say something very sexist. Yeah. Um, he would say that how, I think he, I think he said something about, oh, yeah, that's why you can't trust a woman to do a man's job or something yeah, like something. that. <laughs> this guy is, this guy is insane, bro. Good job. I'm not doing this. Yeah, only slightly horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> oh. See this I don't like, but we got we're gonna move on past that though. <laughs> okay, artiste. <laughs> Oh, 
a little obvious. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, something similar happens, but... I, I know what happened. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you did see that episode. Yeah. The whole, like, ship thing or whatever. Yeah. Look cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm mentally saving all my comments for later. I'm trying to. Nice, we're not gonna die. <laughs> Come on, Definitely, yeah. In front of you, a soccer whoa, thing. Whoa, whoa, He's just a kid. We can't- I mean, yeah. Yeah. Been in that area is Water Tribe Village in the South Pole Territory. That's where we have to go. Sounds, he sounds- we'll find the Avatar. Yes. He sounds like Zuko because too, a little bit. Yeah, he does. Happy I mean, to see my man as Agairo. Sign. I mean, that one was pretty obvious, though. Yeah, I like, was pretty big there. <laughs> it's like, I'm not the only one that saw this. <laughs> He's just like, I see kids my age. I'm A. Where am I? That doesn't help. Yeah, right. Tell me. Where's Sokka? Yeah, he on other ship. Sokka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why we're saying that, but... <laughs> like what the hell is that right i'd be losing my mind right now there, long ago the four nations lived together in harmony <laughs> she's gonna do it she's gonna yep. yes nation <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> Woo! yeah baby that's what i've been waiting for of all four elements could stop them <laughs> the world needed most yes, he vanished. Grand, grand. <laughs> he is the last airbender. Not because it's not because what she's telling him is wrong, is how it's happening, is what I have a problem with. About in the world, how come his omens never take her somewhere with hot springs? Huh? <laughs> 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 Skills have never been sharper. I need to be at my best when I face the world's ultimate warrior. Now, how about a nice cup of jasmine tea? <laughs> Always drinking tea, bro. Mm -hmm. Wish I could learn that fast. Right. <laughs> hey, the visuals look really good, man. Nice. Visuals look really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a scary sight. Yeah. Just a wee bit. Katara, now. In general, you can't really, you can't blame Sokka for like really trying, because he really is like the yeah. only one in the village that's technically the, the tribal chief. Yeah. In a sense, I have Royal Marines, <laughs> tribal chief. He like the tribal chief technically, so. He got to do something. Yeah, yeah. You know? Accept. That was quick. <laughs> right. Leave him alone! The stance is on, on point. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna do business real quick. <laughs> Oh, but it can. <laughs> and it lives, and it lives. Plane! You're in charge. Now, let's go save that weird kid. Say, <laughs> <laughs> like, just so you're in charge now. Right. Bye, you're the tribal chief. <laughs> I'm, <out. laughs> I'm the tribal chief around here. Yeah, you see me, the tribal chief. That's right. In the meantime, I'll have some jasmine tea sent to you. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Iroh has always been a been a, my favorite, one of my favorite characters. Mm -hmm. Very complex character. <laughs> <laughs> they never had to deal with the airbender before, no. so they don't know <laughs> what they can do. They don't know what he can do. It's like, how can you stop? How 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 hard can how how can you stop somebody from doing? It? Only right. the way to do is maybe block their hands, but it doesn't mean but anything. But they're not thinking about that yeah. either, though. Katara, no. There's a no way you're getting me on that. 
<laughs> They're definitely capturing a lot of the energy, though, for sure. Yeah. So far, my problems have been minor, but I'll talk about it later. <laughs> Satisfying. Clean. All I can see is, are you feeling kind of mad? Are you feeling kind of mad? <laughs> are you feeling mad? Yeah. Are you feeling kind of sad, too? Yeah. yeah. This sucks, man, because it's just so pretty there. Yeah. They put together like four episodes in one. Yeah. I mean, it's an hour long. Yeah, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. This looks really cool, like, yeah. and so satisfying how they just did all this. What's happening? What is he doing? Get pissed. You are my friend. The flashbacks hitting. Mm -hmm. I'm jumping myself in his shoes, you know, it's very... Because it's like a very pivotal, pivotal moment for Aang. Yeah. So all this is very overwhelming. Yeah. And there's a lot he just found out in a small period of time. Yeah. Oh. How we do anything to get it back. Bro, Zuko is an artist for real. Yeah. <laughs> but you gotta find something to do when you're on the road. And this is just the beginning. But don't burn it all down now. <laughs> nice, mate. Okay. Um. Okay. Before I have my thought, what did you think about the first episode? Like, how are you feeling about it? Like, I mean, the general like storyline that I remember. Yeah. Like they pretty much did. Yeah. Um. Like they are. I already knew they were going to change around some things. They said they were changing around stuff. Like you know, changing Sokka's character a bit. You know. Certain things. As a general, I, I I enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, you know, I know you said like there was some like a couple things that, you know, you weren't a huge fan of. But I mean, as a general, like someone who doesn't remember like too much about like going forward. Yeah. Um no, I didn't mind it. Yeah. I thought the bending looked really nice. They really put a lot of effort into that. So yeah. I I can appreciate that because it looked real. Like it looked like that was like actually like they were actually doing it. Yeah. So I'm I'm very impressed with that. But yeah, I think overall I I enjoyed the episode. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I'm just trying to um put up a timer here, guys, so we don't over talk. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I liked it. I liked it for the most part. I um, I'm trying not to compare too much to the anime from what I remember. Mm -hmm. Um. There's things later on that, like I said, I will forget. So depending how far they, they, you know, how many things they, how many things they decide to show us, um, I won't remember everything. But um, there they did change around a couple of things, mm -hmm. at least the way that it happens. It wasn't anything too like too major. I would say is more so like a pacing thing. So it's like obviously, even though it's a longer episode. They kind of took like about three episodes or four episodes worth of stuff yeah, and kind of jammed it into one. Yeah, um, I think that's about how many I watched. And after this, I don't remember anything because I mm. didn't see anything else. Well, rewatch anything else. Yeah, they they remove so so. I mean, there's no there's no need to really show all this, but like him riding like the otters and everything like that. But yeah, like it's cool. But like at the same time, I also have to think about. Like, okay, if we're making an eight episode show, we have to pick and choose, mm -hmm. you know, you gotta, you gotta like approach it like a game and min max things. Mm -hmm. Like you can't put too much effort on certain things. You gotta only show the essential stuff and kind of cut down on some of the other things. Even though there's a lot of debate in the community about what is considered essential for this show, mm -hmm. they would say like showing, you know, Aang like kind of being a kid and just kind of goofing off and not being like, you know, whatever, and him riding the otters and all that is, they would say that's essential. 
But I think they kind of made the point, the whole point of of showing that in the in the cartoon or anime, whatever you want to call it, or um or the graphic novel too, was because they were trying to show you that Ang is a child still. Mm-hmm. He's still pretty much a kid, even though he has this responsibility of being the avatar. He still has this you know, he's still a child and still wants to be a kid. And they 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 kind of explained it more than showed it. Um, where yeah. like in the you know the beginning of the episode they were more like, you know, him basically saying, Hey, I wanna I, I'm a kid. Like I wanna be a kid. Like I don't want to have all this responsibility. I don't want to have all this pressure on me. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do this. It was more so to- it was more so told to us than shown to us. Yeah. And you know that's that's fine. Yeah. Um you know, but it, it kind of shows us a little bit too, like where he, where he first got up, he saw the kids playing, and like his first instinct was like, I want to go play with them. Yeah. You know, so they're really trying to hammer in that like I'm between the ages of ten to twelve. I'm a I'm literally a child. Like yeah. I am a kid. And um, you know, and so yeah, so um basically you don't really see that stuff with the Fire Nation attacking the Southern Air Temple. Um until a little bit later in flashbacks. Mm-hmm. But I think it's fine the way they they did it because they kind of it kind of sets up because how it is in, in anime is just like from what I remember and guys who have this more in their brain, all you like Avatar fans that are like, you know, much deeper fans than I am, you guys will remember this more than me. So just correct me. Please correct me in the comments if anything I'm about to say is incorrect. But from what I remember was like Ang was Ang was Ang was told he was the Airbender, like the last Airbender, but it, like he didn't necessarily want to believe it at first. Like he believed it, but he didn't want to believe it. Mm-hmm. Like because he was also talking about like how, how the the Southern Air Temple is so high, like a lot of people can't find it. It because the whole point of it was that it was difficult for the anyone to get there mm-hmm. and from what i remember was the fire nation they found they kind of like invented a new way or found a new way to get up there that um that was pre you know was that previously couldn't be done before mm-hmm. so it was like ang from what i remember ang just was kind of in like disbelief he didn't want to believe it at first he was like there's no way that that would happen to the air temple like, I can't wait to see this. I can't wait to do that. I can't wait to get back home. Like, that was his... So he was kind of like, from what I remember, was super happy. Like, he was yeah. told, but he was super, like, kind of happy and excited to get home. Mm-hmm. And then it didn't really hit him until, was until he got there. Yeah. And when he got there, and he... I remember, from what I remember... God, guys, like I said, it was a long time ago I saw I saw all this. So, please, again, if I mean, anything I, I'm saying is incorrect. I have a vague memory of that, too. Though. Yeah. From what I did see. Remember when he got there, he was like super like he was still believing for a second, like, hey guys, I'm home. Like I made it yeah. back. Like, hey, like, where's this? You know, yeah. started naming everyone. And, you know, he was excited to show them his home and everything like that. And um that's when he found the dead body, like the skeletons, and he saw the old Fire Nation helmets and like Sokka and everyone. Like they found it and they were like, they didn't like want to tell Aang because mm-hmm. they saw how excited he was. And then yeah. they had to show him the helmet. And then that's when he was like, what? And then like, that's when he kind of blew up. Yeah. So that was kind of important for Aang because it was in that moment, from what I remember, is when it all settled in mm-hmm. and he had to accept that fact that no i really am the last one so they kind of did it but didn't do it at the same mm-hmm. time because we saw him kind of lamenting you know when he was back in the water tribe and just kind of like kind of sulking there mm-hmm. which i don't remember him doing too much no in the beginning no he was like pretty happy he was pretty happy yeah. and he was just kind of like i just need to get home yeah. like i need to get to this to the air temple like you know i need to get there and then he started like going through the 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 the, the five stages or whatever mm-hmm. after he found out everything. Yeah. So that was kind of like one of my issues was but because from a story perspective, I feel like it was more important for Ang to of be whole... in disbelief. Yeah. And then get told and then get seeing it for himself and confirming yeah. what he was being told this entire time. Yeah. Because they kept telling him in the beginning, like, hey, you know, you are the last. 
the Fire Nation did all this, and they got, and he was like, well, there's no way that they could get to the Air Temple. Nobody could get there. No one even knows where it is. Yeah. He was, I was like, how could they get there if no one, would, you know, only the other airbenders know where it is? There's no way they would find it. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that my people are chilling, and you guys are just lying, and you got stuff all, all messed up. Mm-hmm. And then to get there, and it was just like, oh, nah, they not lying. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Wait a minute. So they kind of just sped past all of that. Yeah. And that's kind of what my kind of issue was. I feel like, again, it, they they got to the point, but I felt like it got there a little too fast. Mm-hmm. And I felt like you didn't really get a chance to... Because if this is someone watching this show for the first time, and they're getting introduced to Aang... I got my timer up, guys. So I'm not speaking to... They're getting, they're getting introduced to Aang for the first time. And they have not seen this, this the animated series. Mm-hmm. I feel like they'll get the point across, but I feel like they're not going to be able to really fully connect to Aang yet. Yeah. Because by the time we get to the temple in, in animation, we've already kind of had some time to adjust to his personality, adjust to his way of thinking, his naivety in a way. Yeah, because then as soon as he gets to the temple and sees everything, then it's like a, f- uh, like a flip in the switch. Yeah, and you get to feel that hurt with him. Yeah. Because... In the beginning, you don't really know. All you hear is that this happens, this happens to the Fire Nation attack. We I mean, watch the first episode, yeah. right? You hear that intro, and then you're like, the Fire Nation, okay, cool. And then as you, so basically, you're kind of with Aang finding out things as you go along. Mm-hmm. So if you're watching the animated series for the first time, you're like, maybe. Yeah. They might still be around. Yeah. Maybe he's not wrong. And then when you get there, you're like, oh, nah. Yeah. Oh, shoot. They dead dead. Yeah. That's when it settles in for you as a viewer. And that's when it settles in for Aang as well. Yeah. So I feel like from a narrative standpoint, they dropped the ball on that. Yeah. Because I also feel like in the animated series, like you said, it kind of helps set up like his character. Yes. And like he's always like a goofy kind of like mm-hmm. childish because mm-hmm. he is a child. Yeah. You know, he's very like lighthearted. He's very like, you know like hyperactive and like you know he's a kid and then he gets a reality check yeah you know yeah so and the thing is too is that like from what i read is that they said they're not going to be showing any side quests Mm -hmm. in the in the show and i'm like that kind of sucks too because Mm -hmm. all of this because i was from what i remember the last airbender when it gets serious bro it got serious and like later on in the in the series when stuff started happening, mm-hmm. that's when stuff started happening. Yeah. Like, Aang grows gradually. Every single one of them has their development moments. And uh, speaking of that, I mean, I have no issue with Katara so far right now. She's standing up to Sokka a lot more than she did in the, in the animated version at first. She would yell at him mm-hmm. and, like, argue with him I whenever... Mean, she- she was kind of feisty with she him. She was feisty with him, but like Sokka was always, and I think this was important for his character. He was always dismissive. Yeah. Of Katara. Because she would have a complaint and he would just be like, Yeah. Okay, keep talking. Yeah. Uh, that's all what's that's all what you ladies do all the time. All you do is is yip yap. Yeah, he was very much like that. And you know, and not I and, and while I don't support, you know sexism or like you know belittling another gender or belittling another person based on race gender or whatever or religion even i don't believe in judging people or or, or, or viewing someone in a certain way while i don't agree with it i do feel like Sokka being sexist is important for his character development Mm -hmm. because he blades him, and even in the first episode, Katara literally says, "You say the most sexist things. You're the most sexist person I like, yeah, ever." And they make that a point, yeah, because it's important for Sokka because it actually helps him with his personal growth. Mm-hmm. I won't discuss too much about what happens in I'll, the animated yeah, series. All I, I don't remember anything. I just remember him like I vaguely remember him like changing as a yeah, character. Yeah, he definitely. changes a lot and a lot of it really happens when he gets humbled by a group of women. Mm-hmm. And I won't necessarily go too much into that. Yeah, but I don't remember any of that. Yeah, I'll kind of leave that. I'll just say that and I'll leave and I'll leave that alone. 
But in the animated series, he gets humbled by by a group of women, really skilled fighters. And because he just thought because they were women, he could beat them. Mm-hmm. And, oh, I'm the tribal chief. I could beat y'all. Yeah. Rome, big Roman Reigns energy. And, <laughs> and he gets humbled. And then that's, you know, that was the beginning of Sokka. Sokka's transformation into acceptance and under and not only of women in general, but also his sister Mm -hmm. and respecting his sister because he always loved Katara. It's just that he felt because I'm the man dad left me in charge. You have to listen to me. I have to protect. I have to lead. I have to provide. And he's had that energy for quite a few episodes. Yeah. Half of the first book of the series. So, you know, I think that's major important. Like, and in, in, in this series here, we're seeing him. And, like, now I'm nitpicking, guys. So, just, I'm like, I, I, I forgot to give a disclaimer to people who never seen the animated series. I'm not trying to spoil too much for people. So, that's a little too late for that now. But, um, and I'm, I'm, being, I'm, being, I'm being very careful how to talk about certain plot points. Um, in, the, in, the, in the live action series so far, it seems as though, like, because we're seeing a lot with his emotions that he's very empathetic mm-hmm. to to sock, you know to Katara's feelings and things like that and and we've seen that in the animated series too as well where like he would say something but then he would just kind of like look at Katara like oh I'm you know I'm like I feel bad for you or I do love you it's just that I'm the tribal chief <laughs> like yeah. that was literally his energy so I don't know. It's like those changes kind of make me a little worried about certain plot points because it's like, what are you trying to really achieve here? Because what does concern me is that the original, the original writers and original creators who were on board with the show and like eventually left Mm -hmm. and separated themselves from the project. Mm -hmm. And that kind of concerns me because I'm like, okay, what happened? What disagreement did you guys have that made the original creators want to leave? Yeah. Was it minor things or was it major things? So, but for our first episode, I think they kind of got the main areas across. They changed around certain things. I personally think is important. Like Sokka's sexism is important for his character growth. Yeah. And we knew that, that like they were changing that like a while ago. Yeah. So Yeah. Because here's the thing. Sokka is supposed to annoy you. Mm-hmm. We're not glorifying sexism. Okay. Yeah. Sokka is supposed to annoy you. Like, if you're a person that has good morals and you believe in equality, anything that Sokka says in the first series is supposed to annoy you. I remember being a kid watching Sokka talk about his sister and how he talked about women. And I'm like, can you shut up, please? Because, like, you're just judging people. I remember not even fully understanding. I just remember being a kid and being mad yeah. because I remember growing up just seeing my mom and women do so many amazing things. Because, like, where I grew up, like, where I grew up, man, you don't disrespect women. Mm-hmm. You would get a, oh, we're, we're over time now. Yeah, you don't disrespect women. Like, look, Caribbean women don't play. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'll just say this because we're over time now. Caribbean, Caribbean women don't play, okay? So it's like, you disrespect a lady, you will get clapped in the Caribbean. So it's like, when I grew, I grew, the way I grew up, man, like, certain guys wouldn't try their luck, bro. They, they would stay away because women, for the most part, they stood up for themselves. They spoke their mind. And I grew up in a culture seeing that. So for me, it was just like, you know, I never really grew up seeing women in an inferior position like certain people in certain areas so the point i'm trying to make is that even as a kid i grew up seeing a good balance in my area and in my culture for the most part yeah so when i saw Sokka being so rude to katara and like generalizing women and being sexist i was getting mad as a child as a 10, 12 year old, I was getting pissed because I'm like, why are you doing that? Just let just you're not even giving her a chance to prove herself. Yeah, exactly. Why are you just assuming that she can't do it because she's a lady? That, makes, that doesn't even make any sense. That doesn't even make any sense. That was me as a kid. So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that's supposed to annoy you. And that's the thing. And then to move on to the last thing that kind of bothered me a little bit was the way that they found Aang. Mm-hmm. Again. I'm really trying my best not to compare. 
But the way they found it was literally like a complete accident. Like the iceberg was just there. Yeah. He was hidden within it. There was no way anyone could find it at all whatsoever. And she found it up. She they they found him by her lashing out at Sokka. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And that was also important for Katara's character because a lot of her water bending came like it was at its height when she was angry. Yeah. And she had to learn how to master that. She had to learn how to control it as time went on. Mm -hmm. So her lashing out at Sokka and getting mad. And then like Sokka was like, okay, calm, okay Katara, calm down, calm down. Okay, 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 okay. You made your point. You made your point. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know, and then she broke the iceberg and then that's how they found him. So it was a little bit of a change, but it is what it is. Anyway, I've taken up all of our time, babe. Is there anything last minute that you need to add that's on your mind that you kind of need to get off your chest or anything? I think kind of covered most of it. I'm sorry, guys. I I, I kind of over spoke. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew's more of a talker than I am for the most part anyway. So it's fine. It's really not like a big deal. Like I, I pretty much got out what I was going to say. Yeah. And then, you know, just, you know, whatever you were saying for the most part. So, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I have a lot more to say, but I'm just going to leave it at that because. You know, I have I have thoughts on Iroh. I think his portrayal is pretty good so far. Um, and we we just love him. Yeah, and we yeah. and we love we love Paul. <laughs> we love him as an actor. I'm yeah. glad. I'm just happy for him. Seeing him in King's Convenience, seeing him on The Mandalorian, he's and just now growing. he's and growing. And I'm just happy that his career didn't end after King's Convenience. Yeah, because he's so good, man. He's such a great actor, man. I, I love him as an actor. Yeah, he's he's just a a cute human being. <laughs> <laughs> you know check out his uh check out his youtube i think it's like angry asian dude or something like yeah, that something like that something like that yeah uh, check out his youtube channel he's such a big star wars nerd he like does live streams of like his toy collections yeah. and like legos and stuff. Saying, he's just adorable you love paul man he's a great guy <laughs> he's a great guy uh yeah. check out his youtube channel too man he's a great actor really humble guy yeah so i'm happy for him that he's uncle iroh and um, yeah, I, I can't wait to see. And I'm liking what I'm seeing with Zuko, too. I'm pretty satisfied with that, too. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, if you don't have anything else to say, yeah. I have a lot more to say, but we just going to wrap up the video. Um, I would say a solid seven out of 10 overall for the first episode. Yeah. Um, but a 10 out of 10 for visuals, a 10 out of 10 for editing, a 10 out of 10 for fight choreography, yeah. a 10 out of 10. So maybe we'll bump it up to 8 out of 10 in total. Yeah, I think those things like really help a lot. Oh, yeah. The, the fire bending. Yeah. Oh, man. Nothing could be as bad as M. Night Shyamalan's disaster. I'm glad I haven't seen it, but I know you're going to oh, make Oh, we're going to react to that when we're done. I know you're going <laughs> to If you didn't see, he made me watch the horrid Percy, the Percy Jackson, Jackson movie. God. Horrid. Bro, imagine, bro. I remember, and I'm not gonna spoil too much, but I know you've seen this clip in M. Night Shyamalan. They're doing all this dancing. <laughs> I've this seen is that? the size of the rock that goes. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen that? I, Matthew, I have seen nothing. I could have sworn you've seen that beam. I've seen nothing. Not a single. All right, all right, all right. Let me shut up then. Let me shut up then. Let me shut up then. I'm yeah, gonna just not let me shut up. Let me shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not gonna talk about the whitewashing in the old in the OG movie either. Yeah, I know about that. <laughs> that I know about. <laughs> Cause they, Netflix made it a point this time. <laughs> yes. Yes. At least they got the, the the proper representation of what you know their ethnicity should be. Yeah. <laughs> so Thank you, Netflix, for that, at least. All right, anyways, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, we're going to watch the next episode after a short break. And, uh, yeah, uh, leave your thoughts and comments down below how you're feeling. If you think I'm overreacting, if you think I'm overanalyzing, too, let me know in the comments. I'm trying so you know, my best not to do that. I'm trying to just judge it as its own thing. Again, to wrap up my thoughts, I think overall the episode is pretty decent. They covered most of the main plot points for how everything starts. And the fighting is great. The music is great. Editing is awesome. The costume designs are great. Some some of it look, mm, but most of it is pretty good. Yeah. Color grading is spot on. Love the saturation. Love the hues. Everything looks great from a color grading standpoint. The colorist did a great job. Chef's kiss. Love you. And everybody, everybody, I think, ate on the actual developmental side of this project. Mm -hmm. So looking good so far in those fronts. And yeah, can't wait to see you next episode. Yeah, that's yeah. it. We'll talk about it. Oh, we'll see you in the next one. Clockmaster and, and Cosmic Banks. Ow.